Good morning. It is good for us to gather this morning in worship. A few announcements here at the beginning. I draw special attention to the insert about the concert that we will host here on Saturday, October 8th in the evening. Also, you will find throughout here the different ways that you can be involved and the things that we are looking for um, for Riverside Kids or Fabric Donations. Also note that Sunday School and Forum started today. It looked like we had a good group of kids down there, and I'm guessing singing and class went well. I saw some building with graham crackers and icing going on for King Solomon's Temple. We also started Forum today, where we had good discussions about the values here at Church of Our Savior. We will continue to have those conversations in October. There won't be this next week as I will be out of town next Sunday and Pastor Bruce will be with you all. Also, this morning I make the announcement that in the sure and certain hope of the resurrection, I announce that Boyd Kilm passed away on Friday. And so we pray for Maureen and for his full family upon his death. With that, I invite you to stand as you are able, as we join together in confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who creates, redeems, sustains us and all of creation. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Let us take a moment now to think about those things that separate us from God. To you, O oh God, all hearts are open, to you all desires known. We come to you confessing our sins. Forgive us in your mercy, and remember us in your love. Show us your ways, teach us your paths, and lead us in justice and truth for the sake of your goodness in Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. By water and the Holy Spirit, God gives you a new birth. And through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, God forgives you all your sins. The God of mercy and might strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Among us, we gather in the name of your Son to learn love for one another. Keep our feet from evil paths, turn our minds to your wisdom, and our hearts to the grace revealed in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated. A reading from Amos. Hear this, you that trample on the needy and bring to ruin the poor of the land, saying, when will the new moon be over so that we may sell grain, and the Sabbath so that we may offer wheat for sale? We will make the ephah small and the shekel great, and practice deceit with false balances, buying the poor for silver and the needy for a pair of sandals, and selling the sweepings of the wheat. The Lord was sworn by the pride of Jacob. Surely I will never forget any of their deeds. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah, give praise, you servants of the Lord. 
Praise the name of the Lord. From the rising of the sun to its going down, let the name of the Lord be praised. The Lord is high above all nations, and the glory of all the heavens. Who is like the Lord our God, who sits enthroned on high? The Lord takes up the weak out of the dust and lifts up the poor from the ashes. The Lord makes the woman of a childless house to be a joyful mother of children. Alleluia. The second reading is from 1 Timothy, the second chapter. <clears throat> First of all, then, I urge that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgivings be made for everyone, for kings and all who are in high positions, so that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and dignity. This is right and is acceptable in the sight of God, our Savior, who desires everyone to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God. There is also one mediator between God and humankind, Christ Jesus, himself human, who gave himself a ransom for all. This was attested at the right time. For this I was appointed a herald and an apostle. I am telling the truth. I am not lying. A teacher of the Gentiles in faith and truth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel according to Luke. Then Jesus said to the disciples, There was a rich man who had a manager, and charges were brought to him that this man was squandering his property. So he summoned him and said to him, What is this that I hear about you? Give me an accounting of your management, because you cannot be my manager any longer. Then the manager said to himself, What will I do? Now that my master is taking the position away from me, I'm not strong enough to dig, and I am ashamed to beg. I've decided what to do so that when I am dismissed as a manager, people may welcome me into their homes. So, summoning his master's debtors one by one, he asked the first, How much do you owe my master? He answered, A hundred jugs of oil. He said to him, take your bill, sit down quickly, and make it fifty. Then he asked another, and how much do you owe? He replied, a hundred containers of wheat. He said to him, take your bill, and make it eighty. And his master commended the dishonest manager, because he had acted shrewdly. For the children of this age are more shrewd in dealing with their own generation 
then are the children of light. And I tell you, make friends for yourselves by means of dishonest wealth, so that when in it is gone, they may welcome you into the eternal homes. Whoever is faithful in a very little is faithful also in much. And whoever is dishonest in a very little is dishonest also in much. If then you have not been faithful with the dishonest wealth, who will entrust you with the true riches? And if you have not been faithful with what belongs to another, who will give you what is your own? No slave can serve two masters. For a slave will either hate the one and love the other, or be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and wealth. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. Will you please pray with me? O oh God, may the words spoken and the words heard be your words. For only when you speak do we have life. Amen. So, if as I was reading today's gospel reading and the parable that Jesus is telling his disciples and what he tells them after the parable, and you are sitting there scratching your head wondering what in the world is happening, know this, you are not alone. Many have struggled, and when I say many, I include biblical scholars, theologians, pastors, preachers, seminarians. We all struggle with this. It's been a struggle for centuries, probably since Jesus told the parable. And as we read this parable and what Jesus says about it, many questions probably arise. I mean, how does the manager decide what percentage he's giving off of each of them? I mean, one had 50% and one had 20% off. Why does the rich man commend the manager? Why does Jesus offer this manager, be him dishonest, unjust, or shrewd, all three of those words can be used to translate the Greek and mean something different. But why is this manager being used as an example for Jesus' disciples and followers? You start to question if we've missed something along the way in our reading of Luke. Or is this parable going against everything else that Jesus has been teaching and preaching up to this point? I mean, that list of questions could probably just keep going. Those are just the first that came to my mind. Yet I think amongst all of the questions that we can have and raise with this parable, I'm guessing we can agree on one thing. That, he, that Jesus is teaching about money and wealth. And maybe the question that we should really be focusing in on and what Jesus is really aiming for it with this parable is, what is money for? Why do we want money? For in this parable, we hear about a manager who squanders his employer's property, and knowing he didn't have much time before he was unemployed, that he went and he knew that he wasn't made for hard labor or to be begging on the streets. He made out and summoned the employer's debtors, and forgave part of their debts, securing their goodwill and loyalty for when he no longer had a job. And then when the rich man, the employer, finds out, commends the manager for his actions. 
money is central to this parable. And we, as the readers, the hearers of this parable, now we are left to think about what Jesus is trying to say about money. What is money for? And the church, we might try to avoid any conversations about money and finances. I mean, when we try to put on top of it that money matters are less important than spiritual matters. However, money matters are spiritual matters. And what we do with our money is a telling sign of our spiritual maturity. For if we pursue money, wealth, what is historically known as mammon, for me, myself, and I, for just the accumulation of money and to have as much as I can of building up those new barns we heard about a few weeks ago in a parable. So to sit back and relax and just take in all that I have. Or that we have for our innermost circle of family and friends. We are making money into an idol. We want to look more into idols. We can turn to Luther. Many of you probably know of Luther's small catechism. He made it in order for households to teach about the Ten Commandments, the Lord's Prayer, the Apostles' Creed, the Sacraments, and some meal prayers and daily prayers in there. But what you might not know is that Luther also wrote a large catechism. Yeah. So, thankfully, you only had to possibly memorize the small catechism. Large one, it goes on for a while. As Luther meant the large catechism for pastors and preachers, so spends much more time going into depth about those same topics. And so in talking about the first commandment, you are to have no other gods. Luther expands on what it takes for something to be a god, to be an idol, saying, a god is the term for that to which we are to look for all good, and in which we are to find refuge in all need. Therefore, to have a God is nothing else than to trust and believe in that one with your whole heart. As I have often said, it is the truest and faith of the heart alone that make both God and an idol. If your faith and trust are right, then your God is the true one. Conversely, where your trust is false and wrong, there you do not have the true God. For these two belong together, faith and God. Anything on which your heart relies and depends, I say, that is really your God. And Luther keeps going for another page and a half or so. And in this, he also includes talking about how mammon, money, property, wealth, is the most common idol on earth, as that is what many set their whole hearts on. Remember, he's writing in the 1500s, but I don't think that has changed today. Hearing that about idols, we also go back and hear what Jesus says right at the end, after the parable. You cannot serve both God and wealth. 
This is not a time that we can bring in that handy, good Lutheran understanding of both and, having both. Here Jesus explicitly says, it is either or. You either serve God or you serve wealth. Yet it's important to add in that money is not necessarily bad and not something that we should be ashamed of. For when we see mammon, our wealth and money and property, our time, our talents, our treasures as a resource to follow God's call to care and serve our neighbors in that we are placing our trust not in our money and wealth and time and talents. We are placing our trust in God. What is money for? Why do we want money? Is money for survival? Or is it for mission? Do we see money as scarce? And so we need to collect and have as much of it as we can so our neighbor doesn't get it? Or do we see money as abundant? For the mindset that we have around money shows us who or what we are serving. For a mindset of survival and scarcity means we are serving wealth. And a mindset of mission and abundance around money means we are serving God and a living into God's call for us to live for our neighbors. In this parable, Jesus is teaching his disciples what it means to be good managers, good stewards of what they have been entrusted. And maybe that means that we should be as crafty and creative, as shrewd as the manager in finding ways to be generous and care for our neighbors. To use those same skills and effort that we use to advance our own careers and make those correct networks of people to work for love and justice in the world. Jesus is teaching his disciples and us about being good managers and good stewards. He is teaching that what we do with money, wealth, treasures, our time, our talents, what we have been entrusted with matters. And note that I am using the word entrusted. Not that we have been gifted by God, for when we give a gift, no longer belongs to us. We don't get a say in what happens. But when we are entrusted with our time and talents and treasures by God, God still calls us to live in certain ways. What we've been entrusted with still belongs to God. And we are called to use it for the betterment of community. The conversation about what we've been entrusted with by God and how we use it is not just a discussion for a personal level. It's also a conversation for the congregational level. To think about how we as a congregation here at Church of Our Savior are using the resources which we have been entrusted with. And if we use those resources 
out of a mindset of scarcity and survival, or out of a mindset of mission and abundance, about whether we are best using our resources for our mission in the world, for God's mission in the world. I'm going to say, if we want to dig deeper into our values and mission as a congregation, join us in October for Forum, as we dive even more into our values and our mission, because we heard a few weeks ago, for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. That connects so well with you cannot serve wealth and God. This parable is one of the hardest to understand, and yet we can see and know that money is important. And to continue to ask ourselves, what is money for? That money is not meant to be served and made into an idol. That money is not an end of itself or a means of self-aggrandizement. Rather, we hear money, our time, our talent, our treasures, is a means for far-reaching generosity and justice to reach out and build a community of love and justice, and in so doing, build up God's kingdom now. Amen.
Let us join together in professing our faith found in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. As scattered grains of wheat are gathered together into one bread, so let us gather prayers for the church, those in need, and all of God's good creation. God our Savior, keep your church in faith and truth. Accompany those preparing for baptism or affirmation of baptism. Enlighten preachers, teachers, seminarians, and all those who share your good news with the world. God of grace, Hear our prayer. Divine Teacher, you instruct your children to be responsible stewards of your creation. Show us how best to care for the earth and its resources and guide those who work to develop sustainable practices. God of grace. Hear our prayer. Ruler of nations, you direct those in authority. Give leaders wisdom and compassion so that may all may live in peace. Inspire public servants to follow the example of courageous leaders, and safeguard the dignity of each person. God of grace, hear our prayer. Helper of the needy, you lift up those who are oppressed. Breathe justice into economic and social systems that perpetuate poverty and hunger. Sustain food ministries, clothing banks, and emergency shelters. We especially pray for healing and comfort for those on the prayer list. For the family and friends of Boyd. God of grace, hear our prayer. Sustainer and giver of life, you bless this congregation with abundance. Abundance, instruct us in the proper and faithful use of wealth and resources that we share. That we share generously. God of grace, hear our prayer. God of glory, you gather your saints around your throne. Keep us thankful for the witness of those who have gone before us and bring us with them to the heavenly feast that has no end. God of grace, hear our prayer. Gathered together in sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, gracious God, we offer these and all our prayers to you through Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. So with you. I invite you to share a sign of peace with one another. Peace be with you, Pastor. Peace. Peace.
Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. Through your goodness, you have blessed us with these gifts, ourselves, our time, and our possessions. Use us and what we have gathered in feeding the world with your love through the one who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. supper he took the cup gave thanks and gave it for all to drink saying this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin do this in remembrance of me gathered into one by the holy spirit let us pray as jesus taught our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. You may be seated. At this time of receiving communion, I will commune my assistants first. When we are done, we will come forward. I'll be in the center with the bread. The communion assistants have wine on the outside and grape juice in the center. I also have gluten-free wafers. Know that this is God's table, and all are welcome here. So Christ invites you to the table. Come, taste, and see.
please stand as you are able. Now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace unto everlasting life. God of the abundant table, you have refreshed our hearts in this meal with the bread for the journey. Give us your grace on the road that we might serve our neighbors with joy for the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Gracious God, loving all your family with a mother's tender care, as you send the angel to feed Elijah with heavenly bread, assist us in this ministry on which we are sent forth. In your love and care, nourish and strengthen those to whom we bring this sacrament that through the body and blood of your Son, we all may know the comfort of your abiding presence. Amen. Amen. Receive this blessing. God, who gives life to all things and frees us from despair, bless you with truth and peace. And may the Holy Trinity, one God, guide you always in faith, hope, and love. Go in peace with Christ beside you.